South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg not officially in the race for president quite yet, but that is very likely to change very soon with the announcement that he has been teasing from his hometown coming up this weekend. Even before then, he's finding himself in a pretty unique position. Pretty much the one Democratic candidate that is getting name checked by the vice president right now. And it's become the definition of a back and forth and getting as personal as a political fight can really get. Buttigieg, who would be the first gay married man to win the White House, is taking on the vice president's views on gay rights. I'm not critical of his faith. Uh, I'm critical of bad policies. Uh, I don't have a problem with religion. I'm religious, too. Uh, I have a problem with religion being used as a justification to harm people, and especially in the LGBTQ community. Buttigieg there, obviously speaking to Ellen DeGeneres, and that's not the first time that he's spoken out about this. Now, CNN's Dana Bash spoke exclusively with Vice President Pence and asked him about the Indiana's mayor, Indiana mayor's criticism of him. I think Pete's quarrels with the First Amendment. Oh. All of us in this country have the the right to our religious beliefs. I'm I'm a Bible believing Christian. And is that belief that my being wife gay and is I are my wife and I are Bible believing Christians. We cherish our faith. We put our trust in God's word, as do tens of millions of Americans. And I think as he seeks the highest office of the land, as he seeks to be that person that takes the oath of office to uphold the Constitution, he'd do well to reflect on the importance of respecting the freedom of religion of every American. Noteworthy that Pence there is definitely not taking the opportunity there with Dana to say no to Dana's question. So what does this mean now for the 2020 race? Joining me right now is Tom Perez. He's the chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure to be with you, Kate. Thank you. What do you make of this now continued back and forth between Pete Buttigieg and the vice president? Well, I think Pete, I think the mayor is correct. I mean, you, you the use of religion uh, by the vice president and, frankly, by the president uh, as a tool uh, to enable um, discrimination is, first of all, contrary to the teachings. I, I, my faith teaches me that I love my neighbor. There's no footnotes. There's no exceptions. And I think Pete's faith teaches him the same thing. And so I, I think this debate will uh, continue. And, and, you know, we, we dream a nation uh, in which people are judged by the content of their character. And, and that's what the American people want. And that's what, uh, that's what Pete is talking about. That's what Democrats are talking about. And that's what America wants. And, and with uh, the Mayor Buttigieg talking about this, I mean, he is on the rise. I mean, right now, it, he's, he is third in third place in polling behind Biden and Sanders in recent polls in both Iowa and New Hampshire, ahead of other, you could arguably say, bigger name, what, what better known candidates. What do you think is behind his rise? Oh, I, I, I know Pete well. We ran together uh, for DNC That's chair. That's exactly right. I, he, he is, uh, he's a great candidate, and, and so are all the candidates. And, and Kate, that's why we put together uh, an unprecedented, uh, inclusive process. That's why, you know, in July we'll be having two debates, one night after another, on, on CNN. And if we have, we, we may have, you know, 16, 18 people who are eligible to participate in those debates. And the reason I welcome that is because we have so many people who have a, a positive, inclusive vision of America. And I look at my job as DNC chair is to ensure that everybody has a chance to make sure that their story is told, to make sure the American people can kick the tires on all of the candidates. And, and that is, I think, one of our most important jobs. And, and we have been uh, in, inclusive to an unprecedented degree. And that, I think, is the right thing to do because Mayor Pete is doing a great job. And so are so many other candidates who are running for president. And I can't wait for these first debates so that the American people can see everybody on the stage. I'm looking forward to those debates as well, I can assure you that. But as you brought it up, I mean, so you have a debate in late June, CNN's debate in late July, as you mentioned, in Detroit. The rules cap the number of people who can be on the stage at 20 over the two nights. Right now, there are Correct. 18 candidates, but it seems like there could very well be more than 20 Democratic candidates by then. I mean, are you prepared to cut out, I don't know, say, let's say three or four candidates, even one candidate, from these first debates? 
Well, we'll cross those bridges if and when we get to them. Uh, it's unclear how many people will be in the race. Right. Uh, what is clear is that in these debates, we're not going to be talking about hand size. We're going to be talking about health care. We're going to be talking about how we reduce the cost of uh, prescription drugs. We're going to be talking about how we make sure America works for everybody, not just a few at the top. And, and again, uh, on these debates, the first night and the second night, we're going to do a random assignment so that mm -hmm. there's not a varsity and a JV, because I firmly believe, I know that there are some who've come to me, uh, Kate, and have said, I'm worried about a large field. I welcome a large field uh, because the enthusiasm on the Democratic side is remarkable. And the enthusiasm in no small measure is because we have great candidates. And these candidates are, are talking about um, an America that works for everyone. And so what we're doing at the DNC throughout this uh, mm -hmm. is to make sure that those candidates get a fair shake. And I think random assignment and having no JV varsity stuff, uh, uh, I think that really uh, is going to help moving forward. And at the end of the day, if there are 20 people that run, 19 aren't going to make it to the mountaintop. And my job is to ensure that all those 19 candidates and their supporters uh, believe that their candidate got a fair shake so that when we uh, come to Milwaukee next July of 2020, mm -hmm. We hit the starting line with a sprint, and we continue that sprint in unity to make sure well, that Chairman, in 571 say, days we win. And, and, and everyone loves to hear that everyone gets a chance to kick the tire. Everyone's going to have a chance to kick the tires on all of these candidates. But with the, and it's shocking to even say, with the real possibility that there could be 20 or 21, let's say, candidates. Do you see a po do you, I know you said you cross the bridge when you get to it, but do you see a chance where you would make an accommodation in order for everybody to be able to be on the stage? Well, we set forth the rules months in advance, and we, we set forth exactly uh, what we would do in the event that we hit 20, and, and we'll follow those rules moving forward. Again, I, I, it's a hypothetical question at this point. Uh, some days you think there are more candidates, others other days, uh, I'm not so sure. In any event, I mean, we have a double-digit field of candidates, and I, yeah. again, I think they're spectacular. And my job is going to be to continue to make sure that uh, we're treating them all fairly and, equally importantly, that we're building that infrastructure, the organizing infrastructure, the, the, the data and technology infrastructure, that voter protection infrastructure uh, that will help our, our nominees succeed. That's why we, uh, we rolled out yesterday a really important part of our, our work, which is telling the story of Donald Trump's trail of broken promises. If you go to our Twitter feed, at DNC War Room, you will see story after story of Donald Trump making the promise in, in Ohio, we're not going to close any factories. And then you see the factories close. I'm not going to touch your Medicaid and those efforts to cut Medicaid. We're mm. telling the story of what we believe as Democrats, and we're telling the story of the trail of broken promises so that we can make that point that it's the Democrats who have your back, and it's this president who has a knife in your back. Well, and that, and that fight begins in earnest for you guys, and in the, that hypothetical of more than 20 in the debate stage could become very unhypothetical very quickly. I'd love to have you back if and when that occurs. It's Thank always you so a pleasure to be with you. Look forward to coming back. I really appreciate back. it. Thank you so much. Tom Perez. Have a great day.